Hi, this is Joe again with another review. For the sake of this video, we're going to be discussing the ESPN documentary, uh, Last Dance. It is, of course, a documentary on the Chicago Bulls dynasty back in the 90s. And more specifically, it really details the last season of the, of the Bulls. Uh, well, focus on pretty much the whole, the whole dynasty of the Bulls in the 90s. But mainly focused on the, the last season. It was the 1997-98 uh, NBA season. It was dubbed the last dance by the coach, Phil Jackson. <coughs> because the way in, before, during uh, training camp for, for that season, before the season started, uh, got the word that Jerry, from Jerry Krause, who was the general manager of those great bowl teams in the 90s, all he said is going to break up, the, break the team up after this 97-98 season. So it doesn't matter what what the Bulls did, they uh, Dream Cross was going to break the team up, which of course eventually he did do. And of course, so the story was of course getting rid of Phil Jackson and getting rid of the players. They were getting older, they were not. I mean, they were playing well, uh, obviously, because they won three. Uh, six championships in eight year, in an eight year span, so so they were literally the Bulls were the team in the nineties of all sports. And, and just uh, when they go all oh, the Yankees were the team in the nineties because they won uh, three three times, so, something like that. They won ninety six, ninety eight, ninety nine. Well, we're kind of two thousand. You put two thousand in there if you want. It's the twenty first season. Uh, on the 21st century, they started in 2001, so you could throw 2000 in there if you want. But really, the team in the 90s was the Chicago Bulls, because they, they won six times, six times in eight years. So that so, so they were a league team, and even uh, so Michael Jordan said in the documentary, he said even if we go 82 and 0, Krause was still gonna break us up. General Manning was still gonna break up, break, break us up, bring the team up, and. So, uh, so it's really the story of the whole decade. It's, it's really more of a positive story spent on Michael Jordan. I'm going, and I'm going, I am going to get into it. Of course, the really story is when Michael Jordan was recruited out of college. He went to North, University of UNC, North Carolina, uh, University of North Carolina. He, got, he gets drafted. After his third year, he went to save for a fourth year in college. But his coach, Excuse me. And his coach and his parents uh, insisted for him to go into the into the NBA draft, and he was drafted third in the nation. He wasn't even drafted first in the nation. He was drafted third in, third in the country in in that uh, draft, and he sort of gets drafted by the Bulls, and of course, the rest is history. Uh, of course. When the Bulls started, of course, winning championships all the time, Michael Jordan became such a huge figure in, in basketball. Uh, took took him about like five, six years to come to become, you know, from Michael Jordan one of the one of the best young players to Michael Jordan, you know, the basketball god and you know the greatest of all time and all that stuff. And of course, when he started winning, of course, he was doing, you know, he had his own Nike commercial. And that was when Nike was meant something because Nike was was a was a at the time was a struggling sneaker company. I mean, at the time of the eighties, I was I was buying some Nikes, but not not all the time Nikes. And then of course Michael Jordan had a sneaker deal. Everything was in the Jordan sneaker, uh, from basketball sneakers, of course. But, but, but most uh, Air Jordan sneakers were obviously the basketball sneakers, but I mean Air Jordans for uh, running. Cross training, everything had the air, you know, Nike, Nike swoosh and, and ear on. That's when Nike actually meant something. Now Nike it means crap because of two words, Colin Kaepernick. That now, now nobody should be buying Nike Nike stuff because of that son of a bitch. There's a different story for another day. So so he was getting endorsement deals. He's doing it for Nike. He's doing McDonald's commercials. Of course. 
Uh, they also brought up in the documentary, which which is you know which they did focus on, but not enough to my account. They just focus on most of the documentary. They focus on the, you know the six championships, which is of course and and, and a little bit of the, of the dream team in the night in the ninety two Olympics. Well, it was the first time they had professional athletes on the U.S. basketball team. And I don't think, and I think they lost maybe once or twice in the Olympics since 1992, when they had you know, the professionals. Because now all the other countries have their professional players in the, in the, you know, in, in the Olympics. Well, well some things like, like the gymnastics and the track and field, they're still, in, in the swimming events, they're still mostly amateurs. But, but uh, now for some of the big team sports, like basketball and ho and hockey for a while, until the last Olympics, they had the NHL players, and the professional hockey players in the uh, Winter Olympics. So the big thing that they should have focused on a little bit more, they, they did mention it, but it should have made it to the main focus, or part of the focus. Uh, because the reason why they did that is because they want to be more positive. Terms of Michael Jordan, what great player he was on and off the court, and the six championships, and what greatest player of all time, basketball player of all time, and all that stuff. So they want to focus on that, and not Michael Jordan's off the court stuff, which dealt with his gambling issues. I mean, my, I mean, other than Pete Rose, Michael Jordan was like the biggest gambler in sports outside of Pete Rose. So what happened was he had. Counted thousands, thousands, probably even a few million dollars in debt for because of his gambling. So what happened was, uh, just after the Bulls won the third straight championship in 1993, his father was tragically killed, uh, and the two guys were who were involved in that were arrested. I think they were they were in prison for the rest of their lives, you know, for for, for murdering Michael Jordan, his uh, father. But the rumors, you know, the rumor mills came about that he was killed over uh, Michael Jordan's gambling issues. The gamblers sent to him man to kill Michael Jordan's father. So that so was that, that was the, the rumor that, that went out there. And, there was, and don't forget, at that time it happened, it was just before the internet age. In the internet, it started to maybe like 95, 96, uh, probably even 97 when the internet started. So naturally, of course, there was no Twitter, there's no Facebook, there's no Instagram, Instagram, there's no YouTube. There was, there was no, none of those things even existed back back in 1993. So you admit there's a completely different time. So so people will keep pushing that pushing that narrative that he, that Michael Jordan's father was killed because of Jordan's uh, gambling debts. Uh, Remember the real or the official story was that, that Michael Jordan's father was killed for for the car carjackers, uh, killed him. Uh, that was the official story, but because the story had gone out about the same time about Michael Jordan's gambling problems, so they associated Jordan's gambling problems with, with the death of his father. So, but of course everybody denied it all had nothing to do with with Jordan's gambling debts and all that stuff. So. So that so that was kind of like glossed over. Uh, the other thing that was kind of, also kind of glossed over was uh, that after the death of his father, after the death of jo Michael's uh, fa Michael Jordan's father, he decides to quit basketball and be a baseball player for a while. So he was a baseball player for the 1994 season. He was in the he played for the Bing Binghamton Barons. Uh, of Binghamton Barons in in, uh, in Binghamton, Alabama, for one season he hit like two oh two. I mean, you can't get much worse than that. I mean, Rafael Santana, who played on the '86 Met team, had a higher batting average than Michael Jordan, and he was a stiff. I mean, he couldn't hit one if he fell out of a boat. You know, as, as the saying goes. And so he so after about eighteen months. Jordan returned to the Bulls in 95, in March of 95, and they got to the playoffs, to the conference finals, they lost the conference finals to uh, Orlando, to uh, Shaquille O'Neal and the Orlando Magic, so, which ended, I think, I think they won, 
Yeah. I don't remember if they won. They lost that championship in '95. No, no, no. They lost to the um, Houston Rockets in '95. As the, as the Rockets went back to back years, and they won in '94 and '95 because there was no Michael Jordan to beat them. So, so they won twice, and then Michael Jordan came back for the full season for '95, '96, and they ended up winning three years in a row. In 96, 97, 98. And of course, in 98, they, uh, you know, retired. Uh, again, it's the whole team was broken up at the end of the 98 season. But when uh, the other rumor was that the reason why Michael Jordan took that other time off was not because he was upset of his, his father or if he wanted to try playing uh, baseball. Many people believe that he was suspended for two years because of his gambling or, or a year, year and a half because of his gambling uh, so, so they interviewed David Stern who was uh, then the com commissioner of, of, bas of the NBA he, he denied it, it said no it had nothing to do with uh, basketball, it was a legit retirement by uh, Michael and, 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 and as David, David Stern says uh, covered Michael's behind and says oh it's uh, he, he uh, was a straight out retirement. Bullshit. Okay? He was he was suspended. Okay? And, and I believe he was suspended for it. Even though they, uh, you know, you know they, they, the NBA cut, cut because Michael Jordan was the biggest star in basketball at the time. And also he did the movie uh, Space Jam and did all those commercials with McDonald's and Nike. And Nike was selling like crazy and all, all that stuff. Because of the, uh, you know, because of, because of Michael Jordan, because it's such a commodity, and, and, and they don't want to hurt the biggest commodity. I like with baseball with Pete Rose, because Pete Rose was retired for three years. He was in his third year of, reti of, his, of his retirement as a player. And so he wasn't even playing anymore. He was just managing it at that point when he, when he got uh, suspended for life. And he, he was already retired as, as a player. He wasn't even playing anymore. Most. But uh, anyway, he, he was the biggest money maker. Michael Jordan was the biggest money maker in sports, of all sports. So you're not going to suspend the guy for for gambling and hurt your your sport. You didn't, and he didn't want to do that. So this is all that's called a retirement. Uh, so that's one of the other conspiracy theories that came out of that. And the thing that I should also address before I show this video was the controversy that came out in the last part during the 90, I think it was the 99, the 97 NBA Finals, where we call like like the flu game. When Michael Jordan was, was sick, and he scored like 35 points for being for being sick. Uh, was when someone says he he had like uh, a stomach flu, like one of those 24 hour or 48 hour stomach stomach bugs. Uh, but Michael Jordan said, oh, oh, I never had the flu, I had food poisoning. Because he ordered a pizza, and he got, and he got a, a, a pizza delivered to his hotel room, and he ate the pizza at like 10 o'clock at night, he ate a whole, a whole pizza just, just by himself, and he uh, got sick on it. Now meanwhile, just yesterday, or the day before doing this video, the guy who owned or, and delivered the, the pizza to Jordan, Says there's nothing. I mean, there was nothing absolutely wrong in the that, because they think because playing in, in Utah, I think in Utah Jazz, and they think that that he that the Utah Jazz poisoned his pizza so he could join, uh, poisoned Michael Jordan or spiked uh, the pizza so he could join sick. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the craziest things I've ever heard, and it's, uh, and of course the pizza deliver the pizza guy, the, the guy who owned the pizza joint or managed it. And delivered the pizza to Jordan says that never happened. Uh, because, you know, I think he just had the stone because he ate the pizza so late he, got, he probably got sick on, sick on it because he, he ate the old pizza by himself and got sick on it. That's probably, what, that's probably what it was. I know sometimes I have pizza and sometimes I got a bad reaction at night for the pizza. But it goes away, but by the next morning, it goes away by the next morning. But, uh, you, you know, you with me, with me. But with Jordan, it, I mean, it was a stomach. I mean, it was too late to, to eat pizza, and that, that's why he got sick on. That uh, uh, developed like a stomach bug. For, like, for one of those 24-hour stomach bugs, you know. And that's what happened. Uh, but the 
documentary itself, I thought it was I thought it was a bit too long because it is a ten hour thing or, or ten point thing. And I thought it was way too long, but it was you know it was good and, and it got huge ratings because there's no real sports going on. So let's watch this thing. Uh, and it was a good documentary for it was. And if, as if you like basketball, if you remember that time when Michael Jordan and the Bulls ruled basketball, you're gonna you're gonna like the documentary. Documentary and I didn't mind the documentary at all. I thought it was a damn good show for what it was. So that's my review of the despite the despite the controversies that I went into in this review. So that's my review of the of the documentary The Last Dance. Please click on the video, please read it, please subscribe to my channel, and please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. You can follow all you can watch all my videos and only my YouTube channel, but rallyc.com, so WDY and the whole page to review of viewer Christy Moore. Please check out all of his videos on his website. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.